The other big story in the country tonight is the NDP leadership convention. 4,200 delegates are in Toronto and thousands more are participating from their homes across the country. They've already voted once today after hearing from the seven leadership candidates and tonight a special tribute to the late Jack Layton. Lots to get to. So let's start off our coverage tonight with our senior correspondent, Terry Malewski from the convention floor. Terry. Well, well, Peter, as you know, the NDP is out to show that it's more than a protest movement, that it's ready to form a government. But when it comes to running a slick convention, well, there were some bumps on the way. Oh, wow, wow. The candidate's speeches began with a no-frills presentation by Nathan Cullen. No showbiz, no video, no teleprompter, just Cullen and his plan to work with the Liberals in the next election. To have the courage to bring progressives together, to unite this country behind common cause and common purpose. But after Cullen, the no frills part was over. Paul Dua began with a rap routine starring MP Charlie Angus. Is the house that Jack built and it's standing proud and strong. The rapping cut into Dua's speaking time, but he made his point about Stephen Harper. As your leader, I will take him on and I will take him down. Loving, hopeful, and optimistic. Brian Topp also tried to put on a show with a video to show off the blessing of the party's old guard. He's ready to lead. In his speech, Topp urged the NDP to keep to the left. And above all else, a Canada that is more, much more economically and socially equal. But later he took dead aim at rivals who would move to the center. That there's people in this race, Tom O'Kara is an example, who argues that we need to go through a sort of Blairite reformation of our party, if you will, as, as he said in an interview at the beginning of his campaign. Malker's reply was not trouble-free. Although he is the front-runner with the most money, his video had a low-budget look, with Malker seeming a tad overexposed. Then after the video, Malker went for a big entrance with drummers. Trouble was, the entrance went on and on, eating into Malker's allotted 20 minutes. So when he did get to his speech, he had to race through it. We know the Conservatives got 39% of the vote. What that also tells us is that more than 60% of Canadians want a more progressive future for our country. We have to reach out beyond our traditional base and rally progressives of all stripes behind the NDP banner. Mulcair finished with seconds to spare. Not so Peggy Nash. She too had a long setup which left her short of time. So when the clock ran out on her speech, she was cut off by a rising tide of music. Join me, ensemble, together. Now, Peter, we don't really know if all these speeches and the glitches really make a difference, but we do know that most of the NDP's membership waited for these speeches. They didn't vote ahead of time, and they had a chance to do that. So now we're waiting for the results of the first ballot at 10 a.m. tomorrow, Peter. All right, Terry, thank you. Terry Malofsky, our senior correspondent.